Hi, this video is about OpenAI's Strawberry. Is it AGI? What's something that no one is talking about? I'm gonna talk about it that's really critical to understanding where it fits within the AI landscape. And then let's really pull apart some of the fantasy versus reality. Uh, let's have a really, I really wanna look at this from a very practical perspective, not from the hand wavy perspective, but also not from a very negative perspective and trying to dismiss just because uh, some people are scared or because they're trying to pigeonhole what, what it really does. And I'll, my name's David Hood and I'm CEO of 42 Robots AI where we help organizations implement AI. And I'll put a link to a relevant video I shot recently, um, the GPTX use case fallacy. And then I'm gonna put some other uh, links from, to some other videos that I think are really good, other people talking about Strawberry that helps add to what I'm talking about here. So first let's take a, just a really fundamental look on what is Strawberry. I think this really helps uh, put it within, put it in context for what it can do, what it will do, and, and the long-term and short-term impacts. So first of all, not 100% sure that it's GPT-40, but I think it's reasonable to assume that it is a fine-tuned version of, or that it has a fine-tuned version of GPT-4 in it. Strawberry itself is not just the model, and uh, that's something, uh, it's actually a, uh, a, a, a chain of thought-ish process, so it's not just a model. Uh, more on that in just a second. And they fine-tuned it using synthetic data. Basically, they use GPT-4 to generate a bunch of reasoning data. They turn the creativity really uh, hot, really high, and they used humans to mark up if it gave them good or, or bad feedback. And they took the good feedback and they used that to fine tune a version of GPT-4 and then uh, a GPT-40. And then it has like a discussion with itself, um, sort of. That's it's not just. Tr I, I suspect that there's more than just the classic train of uh, uh, chain of thought, but that's the key. Uh, thing that it does and so it's been trained on reasoning specifically in areas uh, that are more logic based like science coding and math there's a lot of areas where it doesn't improve at all and this is actually an open AI first so so far everything that they've done so far that has been successful is has been a model an AI model and that's it like if you look at what ChatGPT is, and I might get a lot of flack for this, but ChatGPT itself, if you take the model out, is a really crappy piece of software, something that a developer could build in a weekend. Um, if you really look at it, it's just as the UI UX that is ChatGPT. It's the models themselves that they have been um, that they have been successful with. But Strawberry is not just a model; it is also a process. It is a system, an algorithm that in integrates into the model. Now it's mostly the model, but there, there's still a, a way in which they prompt the model. Um, I expect that there's different prompts at different steps, uh, but it is one model that they, they have confirmed uh, and that, that it is fine, a fine tuned version using synthetic data and that they do use chain of thought. Now I've heard some people say, uh, let's, let's talk about like what, what is it versus what it does. And we wanna really look at the effective reality versus trying to just really look at like, okay, is it just a, a stochastic parrot as a lot of people called OpenAI's chat GPT initially. Technically that's true, but effectively that's not true. The same thing here when people are saying, is it actually reasoning? Um, and the, the, real, the real answer is no, it's definitely not reasoning. It's using reasoning, it's, it's gathering idea, finding the most relevant reasoning in its training set to apply to the situation that it, it's looking at. And if there isn't something relevant in there, or if it's missing a key piece, then it will fail. But it is using reasoning and effectively it is reasoning. So it's not actually reasoning, but what comes out the other side is in many cases, essentially reasoning that is very human-like. And in some ways, better than humans, better than most humans. But let's, you know, let's not lose track of the fact that it is much more focused on science, coding, and math. These are the things that it has improved on in the research area and the coding. The coding in particular is, is, is much better. Um, I know that our developers, a lot of them, they switched from GPT-4 to Claude uh, months ago, and now they're like, "Hey, we're going to use uh, we're going to use the now a one strawberry for our coding because it is quite a bit better." Um, and I, and I want to point out that they're they're showing their evals, and I'm going to show them in a second. And there's all sorts of things wrong with the evals, in my opinions. But one key thing is here: this is kind of cheating. This is apples to oranges. Strawberry is not just a model. All the other evals are just models. Strawberry is more than a model. It is a process. 
And again, this is an open AI first stepping into the AI engineering realm, uh, uh, taking a few steps into there. And that's part of why it works so well. And that's part of why it can solve these problems. And this is directly relevant to all the other content I've said on this channel with regards to using LLMs as tools versus just them being the solution in and of themselves. Let's take a, a deeper look into the testing. And if you disagree with any of this, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to, to chat with you and discuss with you and hear you out. Um, and I'm sure that there's a lot of people will say, no, it's amazing in all the ways and that's that you're entitled to your opinion. Um, so uh, I will put, so there, there's several, I'm not gonna go into a lot of the testing and deep dives that some of these other people did a really good job of. I think probably my, my favorite one is uh, an AI Explained video. He went real deep in terms of what it really does. And I think he take a, took a really practical, uh, real world approach to it in that it's not all rosy and it's not all garbage. And he, he found in certain places it's, it's rosy, in certain places it's garbage, and in certain places it's not quite what people think. Very good video. Uh, David Shapiro has quite a few different videos. He kind of initially dismissed it, which I think was kind of my initial response. Um, but he's come around to thinking that it is really important, which is not quite exactly what I think, but I, I do think it is a step forward, maybe not quite as strong as other people think. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. And then uh, for good testing, I think better than evals, Matthew Berman has some good tests. Now, they're pretty much all like logic and coding based tests which is kind of his arena. And so it does really, really well on those. So highly recommend you check that out to see what it can do. But he's kind of playing in their realm. Ultimately, I don't think the word puzzles it, it, it really give it the, the full gamut of tests or anywhere near it. Same for the evals. Now let's take a look at the evals that they, that they have. Uh, first of all, evals are data points but they're lar it's largely incomplete data. So some people, they look at these evals and they go, wow, GPT-4 on math, it's now 83. This is a step order of function and amazingness um, in terms of its capabilities. Now, again, this is a large language model and this is more than a large language model. So it is not comparing apples to apples. Um, and this is aligned with what I have been saying well, internally within my company for over a year, but externally on this channel in terms of using large language models as tools, this is just one step into that direction. But also all of these evals basically look at the models from a chatbot perspective. And that is a very narrow perspective. And I'm gonna talk about more, that's directly re relevant to the thing that I think everybody's missing. And I'll put a link to the, the article with the, the, be the benchmarks that you see here. And I, I wanna really point out what this means when they're showing this. This does not mean that it is smarter than that is on the intelligence level as a PhD level physics person. This means that it answers those questions well that are on those those tough tests that are tough for humans. But what it's basically doing is it's still pulling all those answers from its training set. And it's while well, it's got better logic and reasoning that it has been trained on, this does not mean it replaces a PhD level person. This does not mean it is as smart as someone is a PhD level person. The test does not determine your intelligence. This is something really common in our in our education industry right now. They they teach to the test and they think memorizing facts is is intelligence and it's not. Um, un, uh, understanding is different. Um, and while there's a little bit of a gray area there uh, related to is it effectively like that? In some cases, yes, it can it can replicate. If you were to send an email to somebody who's got a PhD in physics and you were to get a response directly from them via email, it can kind of replicate that experience. But there's a lot more to that than than just the the uh, answer question, question ask and answer that you get back. So again, on all of these, it's all kind of math, science, um, and, and physics and logic related. But you know, on English, got the same score. Again, English, basically the same score. I'm not sure what this is. It actually did well uh, also with law uh, to some degree. So professional law, not quite so much, but the LSAT, again, when it comes to tests and global facts, this is not surprising. But I don't see, I don't see this as being a model step, an LLM stepwise function forward so much as they created a process and a system that helps with specific narrow logic and reasoning and math. And mostly uh, th this is not going to solve a lot of the world's use cases. This is pretty narrow in terms of research and coding essentially. Again, I'm not saying that this is like, oh, this is a piece of garbage and it's not helpful in any way. It definitely has some helpfulness, but let's also not 
let's also not let's let's, let's look at whether or not it's is it really a big leap forward and it, and it's not so simple. So first of all, I recognize that having nuance in the internet interwebs is not really something that is common. People want it to be all one or all the other, and there's not really much in between. And by me trying to walk in the middle, some people might think that you know we're oh we'll pick a side, and it's not about that. It's that there's more complexity here um, than than it. Than you than is obvious on the surface, and there's a lack of clarity and consistency in what is AGI, um, and there's a lot of fantasy and hand waving and desire for it to be AGI. Now let's take a look at what Strawberry's definition of AGI is. Okay, so this is coming directly from Strawberry, and its ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge. I don't think it's learning. Um, it is generalized to a lot of different stuff. It does not have autonomy. It's nowhere near autonomy. Um, and I would say it's not consciousness or self-aware and it does not adapt. It certainly does not self-adapt. So those people who are saying this is close to AGI, I would disagree. Now there's a lot of different definitions that you can have for AGI. So, you know, mine is a little bit different and I would say it's a generally intelligent digital entity, which I think fits with a lot of what they had there. Um, to me, this is not quite there, and you're going to need more than an LLM for AGI, which they actually have stepped into, which is why the evals is apples to oranges. Um, I do think that in some narrow ways, uh, this is a, a, a pretty big stride, at least a stride, if not a leap forward. I wouldn't say it's like orders of magnitude better, uh, you know, going from <clears throat> 75 to 98 on a very narrow test that involves pr a lot of memorization isn't necessarily like, oh my goodness, it's, you know, it's even even the physics one, oh my goodness, it's gone up by 50%. Um, in a very narrow test, I don't think that just like blows everything out of the water, especially when you consider the difference between GPT-3 and GPT-4 and how big of a difference there was there. Um, that This is not, not anywhere near that difference in my opinion. And again, it's not just a model. I think it's a broad step forward, but it's not something new in my opinion. It's something that a lot of nerds that I've talked to who are actually building real-world AI solutions have known for a while, which is using the LLMs as tools and using them in more than just a, an in-out type of way. Um, I also want to point out that I think that the, um, the, uh, there's, a, there's a, a common idea out there that basically in order to get AGI, you just need the system one, which we already have, and you need the system two, which is what they're trying to do here. And therefore, you get AGI. And I would say that, that I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate. I think there's a lot more pieces to that system um, than than what is possible. So, uh, but that's that's my opinion, and and, and I, we'll we'll see how that plays out. And again, and part of that is just well, what does AGI mean? <laughs> I definitely don't think it, Strawberry is a flop. I think it's a, a, a nice step forward overall. So, is there? I've I've also gotten a lot of questions about like, oh, well, you said there was slowing progress or uh, w provide some data for that. And there's a lot of data out there and I tried to provide kind of like some references to it, but here's coming right out of AG, uh, OpenAI's paper or their one of their blog posts um, with regards to um, their the progress for that they that they get, the value they get. They're putting in exponential for linear benefit. So this is a log scale, which means it's non-linear. So as they put in more train time and more test time, they get a linear response. So this is exponential scale. So every every slash here is like or, an order of magnitude or somewhere on that range of more time and resources that needs to be put in for a linear result. So this is why slowing time, uh, this is why I say slowing uh, progress is slowing. There's a whole bunch of other stuff like this where in order to get more intelligence out of the language models, they have to put in an order of magnitude more uh, compute and or costs and time and energy or whatever to get that to get one step forward and every step they go up requires uh, like 10x or 100x what the previous step required so you, they they put in an exponential cost for a linear result therefore the progress is slowing on the large language models themselves I do think that there is a whole world of opportunity on um, how to use the LLMs which I'll cover in just a minute and I cover in a lot of different ways on this channel also want to point out that there's a, a, a let's distinguish recipes versus ingredients. These large language models cannot create new ingredients, but they can create new recipes from the ingredients that are already in their training set. So they can recombine different pieces of logic. So maybe in order to answer this one um, 
logic problem. They, it's not exactly in their training set, but there's three, there's three other similar examples where they can take three different pieces from that, combine it together and get an answer to, to, by combining to make a new recipe. But if there is one, if there's four ingredients that are needed and one of those ingredients is nowhere in its training set, it will fail or it's very likely to fail uh, because it cannot create new ingredients. That is a key understanding of why it can't, it's not gonna, it's not self replicating, it's not self improving because it can't create new ingredients and tr try to ask it to write code that works really well with large language models without giving it a lot of context. It's not gonna be very good at that either. All right, what is being missed? So let's take a look at that. If, you, if you're liking this video, please like it. If you're not liking it, then feel free to thumbs down at it all you want. Um, and uh, all right, what's being missed? So there is a huge chatbot focus from the whole industry, almost the whole world in terms of looking at these large language models. You can see it in the evals. It's all about in out. It's all about chatbot focus, which to me and based upon a lot of different reasoning and R&D and client work and foundational principles, what other people would call first principles, it's a little bit different, um, but is that less than 1% of the capabilities and usage of the large language models is going to come from directly using them as chatbots versus using the large language models as tools within software. That's where the vast majority of the benefits are going to be, are going to be gotten. Uh, and some of this is based upon my intuition, but also uh, this has been validated so many times internally within our company. When most people are looking at trying to solve problems with large language models, where, where they put the, the LLM at the center of the solution, um, and what you end up is you're trying to shove as much of the solution to the LLM. Yeah, you have a little bit of like tools over here, a little bit of prompt engineering, a little bit of rag or whatever. Uh, and then you try to put the LLM on a loop and solve the problem that way. And you're going to miss out on most of the use cases uh, versus trying to actually just build software, pull as much as you can out of the LLMs and use them at key places to solve problems that you couldn't otherwise solve. What you get with this in, in business is you get much more reliable outputs versus trying to solve it with an LLM centric, which is super critical to business, which is why a lot of the businesses are struggling to get value from AI because they're, everybody's thinking, almost everybody's thinking about it as very LLM centric solutions. I have talked to super nerds who are actually working in businesses and solving real world problems with LLMs. And they all, when I tell them this, they're like, yes, that's correct. That's exactly what we're doing. We're, we're actually pulling things out. We're ex building software basically. Um, and so that that's uh, the key thing that I don't see anybody else talking about. That's why the evals are, are don't really say as much about what is happening with AI as it seems. That's why going from 60% to 90% in physics isn't like incredibly impressive to me. It's, it's good for sure, but is it like world changing? Is it like, oh, now we're like 10 steps closer to AGI? I don't think so. Um, and also, Let's, let's uh, take a step back and look at Strawberry is not just a model. It's basically OpenAI's first public steps into AI engineering, which is, which is in my opinion, a good thing. And that's what I'm saying needs to be done. It needs to, they need to go way further and use these as tools within a software process to solve real world problems. This is how you build good agents. You don't build good agents by, as someone prominent in the industry said, putting an LLM on a loop. That is nonsense. You're gonna have a lot of trouble with that versus actually just building software. So if you uh, would like a free custom AI implementation roadmap for your business, uh, click the link below or give us a call there. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.